khaki color in it, but it still retains that green color to it. Uh, now this is going to be the color of the entire Yushanka. I think it's how you say it. Don't yell at me if that's not how you pronounce that. I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Yushanka. Uh, so you get it, and you're just going to paint it on there. Again, kind of keeping in mind your light, which direction the light's coming from. So whenever you paint, you want to take it and pull it towards the light. And for the front of it, where the fur is going to be, you uh, do a little bit more of like a dry brushy type motion. So that it uh, essentially takes up space. Now, because this green color is really just not the color that you want this to be, uh, coverage on this one is going to be kind of important, uh, where the contrast of it may not be all that uh, intense, just because of the fact that you're going to be covering up a lot of it. <clears throat> and that's okay in this case, because most of the time, the amount of contrast that you're going to have on any part of the model is going to be indicative of the material that it's made of. So anything that's particularly shiny will have higher amounts of contrast to it. Anything that's like metal, something like that. Uh, at, in all honesty, uh, about the Privateer Press painting question, uh, there's actually, they actually still have a lot of colors that I would really recommend. Their denim color is probably the only color I would use to paint something like jeans. I absolutely adore those things. Uh, the Grave Digger Denim, I think is what it's called. And again, this is going to look bad at the very beginning, especially as you're just trying to build up the depth. And that's okay. We're not at the point where we want to be judgy about what it looks like quite yet. And a lot of times, I'm not even thinking about the color uh, or like the, how the finished product is going to look until literally everything's been painted. Uh, at that point is when you can kind of make a more informed decision on what it is you want out of the model. Because if not, if you were to only take the skin color and not think about all the stuff around it, uh, like before you paint it, so if you were to just paint the model and only paint the skin color, the skin color is going to look super weird just because the rest of the model is not on them. It's not there. So it's going to look super weird. <clears throat> what are you doing, Chuck? Are you still here? You're in Hawaii, right? You're Hawaii time? So it's like... It's probably like... What, like nine? Eight or nine over there? I'm assuming Tim must have. Tim must have went to bed. Partner was transcribing members. I drove at 640. 640. Gosh. Six hour difference. Bro. No wonder you have so much trouble like playing games with us and all that stuff. Oh my gosh. 
Like, I was having trouble finding time to do an interview with somebody from CB. Uh, episode comes out tomorrow, by the way. Uh, from Arachne. Because uh, she's in Spanish time. And I want to say... Oh, gosh. That was like a... Four? Four, five hour difference? Something like that? Obviously, opposite direction from you. Uh, so, for them, it was... Uh, later... <clears throat> so I actually just woke up before I went to work one day, <laughs> did the interview, and then I went to work. <laughs> interview went great though; she was great. Uh, it was a great episode. Uh, I, you can I can usually tell the quality of an episode of Arachne by how much Kara's laughing uh, over the course of the weekend that she's uh, editing it. So that will be available. So if you are interested in uh, science fiction or even just like kind of nerdy talk shows, Arachne is really good. Uh, it's not a infinity only podcast uh, in a lot of ways, like you might think of. Like if um, you were gonna w listen to it, like oh I don't I don't play your uh, infinity, I wouldn't enjoy this. Uh, my goal is to make it approachable from like a variety of ways. So, like, if you like science fiction games in general, you probably really would really like it. Uh, anything that's not really, like, GW per se. Uh, the GW stuff is kind of its own genre in a lot of ways. Uh, but it's definitely more... Um, I don't want to say game agnostic. It's probably not the right way to put it. But uh, I even interviewed... The head rule director. That episode's not out yet, but it'll be the next one. The who read uh, one of the one of the one of the rule uh, big wigs, I guess you could say, from Monster Fight Club, and we talked about game design. And oddly, and funnily enough, this past Friday we actually played at our local store because I found out that he is actually he lives in the next major city just west of me. So I'm hoping at some point I might be able to convince Monster Fight Club to give me stuff to paint on stream if this stream thing takes off. So that might be a cool thing to do as well. Maybe paint up one of the gangs on stream. Because uh, my streams will definitely be going longer than Taylor's. There's no doubt about that. Because uh, I don't have I don't have small humans that depend on me. Uh, oh, also, one thing I did forget to do is on these, on the Medic, uh, I did double check this uh, yesterday. The Medic bag is the khaki color, so i got to go in there and actually paint that sucker. Yeah, a little more of that yellow-green. This is a chunky paint, so I'll just make sure you hit it with enough liquid. Where it'll actually want to go down. So, uh, Chuck, are you going to paint now that you got home? I heard you uh, owe somebody. Some MCP things or something like that. I was saying, are you gonna are you gonna paint now that you're home? From what I understand, somebody keeps telling me that you owe them a bunch of like MCP figs or something. And also, at some point, we will get you on here. All about shipping. <laughs> Heck yeah. 
Heck yeah! Infinity! What are you painting now? Uh, for Infinity, faction-wise. Forget the gun strap. The Russians used uh, the same khaki color for their gun uh, uh, straps. It's not, a, it's not a belt per se, it's a strap. Just make sure you get in there, nice sharp brush. Yeah, O12, that's, bro, that's my faction. I adore O12 is. Probably my favorite. That's a great faction. If you got just like generic O12, like the uh, probably the collection pack, it's got a lot of good stuff in there. Uh, unfortunately, because um, <sighs> O12 together, so you must have got the new stuff then, because uh, they got a new O12 faction that came out at the last Adepticon, which was the Torchlight. So it was like the heavy armor dudes. Uh, a lot of good stuff in there. Yeah, the heavy, yeah, okay, yeah, you got Torchlight. I've been actually, I've been playing them, I played them exclusively for like, uh, ooh, since Adepticon, actually. Uh, I think I played a, one more event with US Ariadna, and I was like, okay, I'm done playing this, and then I switched to Torchlight. Uh, they're good. I think right now they uh, need a couple models to come out. Uh, but the profiles already exist, and I think the profiles are fantastic. Like, the Wrecker is real, real good. Uh, the Prime is very, very good. The Prime is in the box. That was at Adepticon. It's like the big guy with, um, he's got, like, multiple arms. Uh, he's, he's great. You can definitely crutch on him hard. Yeah, dude, I know what you mean. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, military orders gets everybody just because of the fact that who doesn't like Space Knights? O12 is great. Um, O12 just kind of looks like classic science fiction. You know what I mean? It's like I don't know how to describe it. I don't know how to describe it. It's very um, hopeful. I guess, because they got, like, the the Roman thing going on, uh, especially the Torchlight stuff, because the Torchlight stuff is very... They got, like, a Space Marine tinge to it, which is cool. Uh, I know a lot of people complained about it. I thought it was I thought it was fine. I didn't really carry the way. I wasn't a big fan of the helmets at first, so once I saw them in person, I was like, eh, okay, I can deal with this, but... Uh, I know a lot of people were turned off by the... Uh, gener I don't want to say genericness, but the... Uh, the space, the space marininess to it, I guess. Uh, but I, I think they're great. Uh, I have not had a chance to paint. I don't think I painted any. I haven't painted anything out of that new box. Uh, I did paint a ment. I, I painted the ment out of the reinforcement box. Let me have some, some. Yeah, the minor conversion. I'm assuming. Did you switch the helmets? From the the rovers, I'm assuming is probably what you did, Faustinian. That seemed to be the uh, like the general consensus is like how to fix them. Even a couple bear heads. Uh, yeah, so you just yeah, that's a great way to do it too. Because then, um, because when you take the crests off, they kind of look like like maybe hoplite hoplite helmets. Yeah, the WoW swords are an issue. Yeah, you're not wrong. The the silly swords on the Hell... Um, not Hell Razors. That's not what they're called. The uh, Hell Blazers. They're cartoony. Yeah, the, the... The the other swords probably a great, great move. Yeah, I agree. I'm a huge, 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 huge Gamma fan. Uh, I'm a little sad now, especially with the new releases. I think the Gamma kind of got pushed out of its uh, function 
in vanilla just because now that the prime and the wrecker are in the game one of them's in vanilla the other one isn't i want to say the wreck is it the wrecker that's in vanilla or is it the prime uh either way one of them took the gamma i think out of his position from vanilla so now um unfortunately he's probably one of my favorite models in all of infinity and i'm kind of like eh. yeah wrecker's in vanilla yeah the wreck the wrecker's kind of crazy Uh, yeah, the triangular shape, I agree. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they can't take the Yeah, so they take the, uh, the prime. Uh, yeah, not the prime. The uh, wrecker. So, I unfortunately think the gamma loses its position as whatever it was to that piece. Um, I'm not going to say... Yeah, I have to tend to agree. I don't think they quite outclass, per se. I just think that it will have more I guess like utility in a lot of ways because I think one of the issues with the gamma is that if I remember correctly I'm just going off memory here um, it doesn't have a, a template and most of the time the gamma is a long range weapon uh, model which is very very I, so when I did my very best the, the very best at an event I did which was 8th place at uh, Everwinter, which was a satellite <coughs> up here in Massachusetts, I was using the Gamma as like an ARO piece. I would just kind of, I would just stick them on top of a building, which isn't a great idea. I, thinking back on it now, I'm, I'm definitely better. I wouldn't do exactly what I did, but uh, I had them on a building just kind of being a big doofus, uh, blocking chunks of the board with the Fearbach. My big issue with it is, is that uh, I really love the plus three or the plus burst uh, Fearbach. But there's not a lot of situations where you're like, oh yeah, I can use this uh, actively a lot of times. Because if somebody sticks a model up and you know you're like, oh yeah, I have a plus one burst fear bot gamma, and they leave a model up, you probably were gonna be, <laughs> you're probably gonna beat them anyway. Um, no template. Yeah, the, the lack of template, it, it kind of stinks. And that, I do, yeah, the heavy pistol. Ironically enough, I've probably used that thing <laughs> more than I thought I was ever going to. Uh, I love a good heavy pistol, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I think as far as like ARO pieces go, you have to be able to pass armor saves, and I am notorious locally for not passing armor saves, uh, which is what the Gamma lives on. If you can't pass armor saves, Gamma is not going to do so hot because it's not exactly like he's subtle. He's a big uh, meatball. Uh, but I think he's two wounds, NWI? Two. Yeah, but dude, the poor Kreeza. That that poor guy. He he's just been getting pooped on, uh, especially since the Prime took his thing. Ah, uh, see, see. Yeah, I would probably switch to the HLR. Uh, the HLR wrecker is almost like two. It's like it's. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they went back and increased his points a little bit. He's it's good. It's real real good. That 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 HLR is kind of gross. It's uh, it's it's kind of wild. Uh, Devin uh, from Medichem, I think, said it best, where AP doesn't belong on a template just because of how gr like gross of a situation you could get, especially on a chain, like a chain rifle that's also um, it's AP and plus one damage. Oh, that is you. All right, you're Devin. Okay. Well, hi, Devin. See, I gave you credit. I wasn't going to take credit for things you said. Of course I know him. He's me. So to the six remaining people here, uh, this is uh, Devin. Uh, I wouldn't call him necessarily the head honcho of MC, of, not, of MCP. Oh, gosh. Of uh, Medichem. Uh, but he's definitely probably the one that leads it the most. Oh, God, somebody's here. Thanks for coming to the stream, buddy. My uh, main goal is to eventually turn this painting stream into a infinity painting stream. Uh, this poor guy. 
has been not fully painted for <laughs> for way too long. The poor lawkeeper. I use him so much, but I just cannot find the time to finish this model. Absolutely love the lawkeeper. Everybody keeps uh, well, every, by everybody I mean mostly Ernest keeps telling me I'm crazy that I don't just use the robot. But I'm like, he's not hackable. Leave me alone. There's something to be said about something that can go as fast on a bike that's not hackable. Oh, I was, uh, oh, crap, what was I saying? Um, oh, I said thanks for coming. Uh, oh, uh, oh, oh, and I wanted to paint this guy, so, um, the poor law keeper. Like, I use this guy an obnoxious amount, and he's just not fully painted. And my buddy Ernie is, he is always going on about how Dude, I love I love law keepers. I'm, I'm I'm excited for them to eventually make another model. Uh, but he keeps saying that I need to just play with the robot, and like the robot's good. Don't get me wrong, but it's also hackable, and I don't think it has stealth, which is uh, to me is a big deal. But he keeps telling me he's like, no, no, you should be using that instead. And I'm like, I just don't, I can't give it up. Like, the, the robot's crazy. Don't get me wrong. I know that. But, uh, I just, I don't know. I still see a lot of use. Also, Chuck, if you're, if you're listening to this, this is some probably good advice if you want to play O12. We're doing some high-level tactical talk right here. <sighs> yeah, it is, I think it's relevant, right? Because, like, if somebody, especially if somebody has a turn one hacking network up, like, if you go up against nomads, like, you can't get through that. And it's not, like, so much of a good gunfighter that it can just break through on its own. Obviously, you would hope it's, like, supported with supported by, like, an Epsilon or whatever. But it's, uh, it's definitely not a... Like, I just don't think it completely replaces them. Uh, I... I think I think that you could you can gunfight much more uh, evenly with a uh, lawkeeper, uh, especially if you go non-impetuous, where you can essentially use them like a fighter. Much more than much more than the robot, at least I think so. Yeah, a hundred percent. I agree. I agree with the marksman rifle. So I'm glad that they both exist. Uh, I think I still prefer my Lawkeeper with the uh, Red Fury, which I will fully admit that I thought the Red Fury was a stupid weapon until uh, I started getting a lot of reps with the Lawkeeper. And a lot of it, that has to do with the plus one damage on it, uh, which essentially just turns it into a, a Spitfire with shock, which uh, obviously makes it better than just a regular Red Fury, but <clears throat> it is not a uh, a weapon to take lightly, in my opinion. Uh, the Red Fury has game. There, there are certain weapons in the game that I, I think don't. I, I think the Contender is probably one of them, where I think the lack of burst really hurts it. It's not, it's a great gun until you realize you're only shooting uh, like one bullet. Yeah, a regular Red Fury, it's okay, you know. Usually the advantage of the Red Fury is you're not paying Swick. In the case of the uh, the Lawkeeper, you are. 
But when you're playing O12, I think you have to go into it with the understanding that most of your army is going to be having it's going to, it's going to have SMGs. Uh, it's very ironically enough, it amazes me sometimes when I look at lists, and I'm like, wow, I don't have a single combi rifle in this entire list. Uh, literally everyone that doesn't have a swick weapon has an SMG. <laughs> Or uh, potentially a boarding shotgun if it's a uh, aggressive piece, which I think is uh, it's 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 noteworthy in that regard. So any kind of like support infantry weapon that you have, like a Spitfire or uh, Spitfires or Red Furies, I think really uh, shine just because of the fact that you that 16, that 8 to 16 range man is kind of tough. I mean, I'm not even sure it's just Torchlight. I think it's, like, almost all of O12. Like, everybody has an SMG. It's crazy. No, and I agree. Yeah, sweeping light targets, is it can get kind of tough. I think uh, the Red Fury's fine. Um, damage 14 is kind of where you got to be in order, like... Like, I don't know what it, it's... It's, like, always weird to think of weapon damage in infinity where yeah a combi rifle is 13 a spitfire is 14 but it feels so much more impactful obviously it's probably more of the dice just because of the fact that you're forcing another save if you get the hit and you're also more likely to win the combat so like obviously like burst i mean i'm not dumb like burst is obviously probably more important than any of the like actual damage stats for a lot of the guns but it's kind of wild to think uh, like, people will completely not consider the combi rifle as a weapon, but it's only minus one damage from a Spitfire. Yeah, right? With a 13 to 15 for sure. I, I think I think the current season of ITS is actually really good. Uh, I know uh, Devin, me and Devin agree a lot in a lot of ways about the free model thing that they were doing there for the last couple seasons. I, I am thankful that they kind of stepped away from it. Uh, I guess the quasi creature is sort of a free model, but it's more just like a turret. So I'm okay with it. But, uh, I think that, I think the current ITS is great. I, I have no complaints. Uh, I think O12 prestige is a really cool rule. Uh, I haven't really used it much, but the combat drop thing, I keep forgetting it's even a thing. Uh, Comlog, people still use it, but he's been kind of falling behind on updates. So right now, I wouldn't trust a lot of the information that's in Comlog. Uh, it's still a very useful tool, though. Uh, he also... Uh, he didn't get rid of it, but he hasn't updated it in a way where I could record like my, uh, my stats for myself and my games. Because you know, for a while there, when I was really, really trying to get better... Uh, for every game I played at the shop, I would do a uh, a game entry so I could track my win my win loss. Uh, and that I, I want to say Torchlight's not in it, which I, so it means he's not updating it. Yeah, if you specifically tell him what's wrong, he will fix it. Uh, he's really good about that, but I don't think he's been updating it with like new stuff really. Yeah, O12 Prestige is great. Uh, the Tack Aware thing uh, that they added in, I thought that was a... I wasn't even really considering that being a thing, but I was like, actually, you know what? That's... I can appreciate that. Kind of helps keep in check factions that are prolific with extra orders, where you didn't just, like, make the rich richer, which I can appreciate. Because I know NCO... Like, Steel Phalanx has a lot of NCO... There's not a lot of, there's not a ton of tech wear in, in like Steel Phalanx. Like there's a lot of tech wear in like I know I know IA. Um Yeah, I agree with the border skirmish thing. Again, I wish I I wish I was uh paying more attention to it uh where I used it cuz I think that the season's not going to be around much much longer. 
Uh, we are doing a specially themed like combat drop event up here in Massachusetts. Uh, soon, I think there has been a day picked for it, but every single time you do a successful drop, you get like a raffle for a prize. Yeah, Tagaware in uh, Torchlight's great. It's great in IA. I'm just thinking of like who's the most egregious users of the Tagaware thing. Because I know there's a couple model like uh, most of the Ariadna uh, gun people have it. Uh, like, you know, Unknown Ranger, uh, Vet Cat, what are the, what are the...